business in trouble. Joining me now, the war of small business author Carol Roth and Bull Tick Capital Markets Chief Strategist Catherine Rooney Vera. Ladies, thanks for joining me. Happy New Year, Catherine. I want to start with you. What do you make uh, the the uh, you know uh, the, the administration not saying anything that they've done to stoke inflation? Instead, trying to use this as an opportunity to go after business. Well, it's a great opportunity for the government to get even larger than it already has grown, which has been exponentially, uh, Charles. So, you know, you have to make good use of, of a crisis, and that's effectively what, what our government has done. The fact is, is that inflation has come a, a whopping majority from government action, both monetary and fiscal policy. Of course, we have now the wage price spiral, which you just alluded to, the scarcity of workers driving prices higher, and that is going to keep inflation far from transitory, far from persistently transitory, as the Fed almost humorously um, noted uh, in several of its uh, communiques over the past year, but making it more of a, a structural phenomenon, and that is very pernicious mm -hmm. for the American people. We've seen scarcities. That's come as a result of enterprises being shut down over COVID. We've seen large-scale injections uh, and redistribution of wealth, both from the fiscal and the monetary side. And as your previous guest, Judy, also highlighted, I think it's very important to, to consider that a lot of this wealth redistribution has come from Main Street into the pockets of Wall Street. You know, the big guys have gotten a lot bigger. Yeah. Uh, S&P is at record highs, and we still have a a high level of people who are out there looking um, to improve their circumstances. I, I always say our economy is trickle up. You pour a lot of money into the economy and people go out and spend it. It trickles up to the billionaires. You know, though, Carol, there was an right. interesting piece in The Atlantic, and I'm not a big Atlantic reader, but I suggest people take a look. It's by Glenn Hubbard. He's formerly of the U.S. Council of uh, Economic Advisors and, and so many other things. He was in the Bush administration, now as a professor of economics at Columbia. And he, and he titled the piece, Even My Business School Students Have Doubts About Capital. Capitalism. Here's the thing. Uh, big business has brought a lot of this on themselves, I think. And, and, and we always try to, you and I always try to differentiate that from small businesses. But your thoughts on the notion that big business may have put themselves in a position where we are seeing revolts? I think you're spot on, Charles. As you and I have discussed in the past, we have really moved towards something that looked a lot more like capitalism towards this mix that includes far too much cronyism and central planning. And now we have this great consolidation underway that Catherine alluded to, where the wealthy and the powerful and the well-connected are doing better and the playing field is getting uh, further tilted. Big business loves this. They have the power to hire lobbyists and lawyers and politicians directly. They can have anti-competitive legislation, uh, which keeps away new competitors mm -hmm. and, and hurts uh, current competitors. They have the Fed, which has been giving them cheap capital to, to you know, help compete with small businesses. And in turn, the government loves it because they get cooperation and compliance and campaign contributions. Yeah. You know, we used to joke that one of these days we would all end up working for Amazon. There was actually a study that came out, I think it was the end of July of last year, that says one in 153 American workers now works for Amazon. <laughs> None of that is good for the economy. You know, it's very crazy, too. It's like when I when I hear Mark Zuckerberg say he's down for more regulations, you got to say, huh, what the heck? Because to your point, it puts a moat around the industry and no one can compete with them. And they actually do get bigger. There was another interesting point in there in this uh, piece, uh, 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 Catherine, uh, uh, there where he points out that individuals he's talking with his wife about policy fall into two groups, uh, economists and real people. And he said real people are in charge. And the reason I bring that up, uh, policies, you know, sometimes they may buck orthodox thinking, particularly economic orthodoxy. Uh, but are there times when those kind of, when those, this sort of embedded economic orthodoxy, particularly on, cons on the conservative side, should be challenged? There certainly are, and we've seen that resurrect. We've seen that manifest in in populism, both left wing and right wing. You know, the real people are the ones, the working class, that create the economy, that generate wealth. And I think that those are the ones that drive the economy, not the oligarchy in D.C. and the Upper West Side in Manhattan and Chicago and L.A. You know, it, we can have this academic 
idea. Right. We can talk about universal basic income, but the fact is, is that people need to get it. Capitalism works. It brings individual liberty and freedom, and socialism just increases our dependency on a government on the government, and it doesn't work. You know, we have family so, in Venezuela, and Venezuelans can very clearly explain to you how poorly this system works. So absolutely. stick with what works, and that's capitalism. Hey, real quick, less than a minute, Carol. I got to ask you about uh, uh, Green Bay Packer Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the sports media were. They they already had like a gazillion reasons for him not to be the MVP. He's clearly the MVP, but now they got a new one. Someone <laughs> caught him reading, uh, uh, I think it was Atlas Shrugs, Ayn, Ayn, Ryan, uh, uh, Ayn Rand, right? I mean, so here you have someone, you know, for a variety of reasons, he has is, he is angered the, the left. And now, of course, I think that really sinks his chances. The question is, if he doesn't get it, who the heck they're going to give it to? <laughs> well, you know, it's a, it's a good question. I am a Chicago Bears fan, so it's very hard for me to defend I Aaron know, Rodgers. I know, but you're also a football uh, but, fan, and you're a capitalism yeah, fan. fan <laughs> and they don't like the fact that he is standing up for individual rights. Right. So, you know, they've gone all woke. Who knows who they would give it to? <laughs> hey, right. if, I win, if I win the MVP, don't ask any questions how it happened. That's all I'm saying. Ladies, i got to go. <laughs>